everybody, Schwayze here, and in today's video, we are taking delivery of the all new 2023 BMW i4 M50. Okay, so like I said, this is the all new 2023 BMW i4 M50 package. And before I get into all the details about this vehicle, uh, keep in mind, I just took delivery of this vehicle just a few hours ago, and I really just drove it a couple blocks to where I'm at right now. So this is a true first impression, uh, not really talking in detail about everything about this vehicle, because I'm gonna have this vehicle for a week, and I'm gonna do a more in-depth video Video about all of the cool features and specifications and everything you should know about this all new vehicle. But today is kind of a first reaction video letting you know, okay, these are my first impressions. This is what you can expect if you take delivery or test drive or own this vehicle. So starting off with what this vehicle is, if you're not familiar, this is the all electric BMW 4 Series. So they labeled it the i4. It's based off the 4 Series Grand Coupe. And that's obviously because of the coupe styling over here. So it's it's essentially the same exact vehicle as the 4 Series, but they took out all of the internal combustion components and the transmission and put in this electric powertrain. We'll talk about that a little bit when we get inside as well. But this is not an all new platform like you find with the BMW iX or some of the other electric vehicles on the market. This is kind of just a modification of an existing internal combustion platform. And there are some advantages to that, like this makes it a little bit easier to transition from an internal combustion engine because there's not any crazy new gadgetry or differences between a uh, standard 4 Series, except for a little bit on the interior. But on the outside, this looks just like your traditional 4 Series. And I think it looks really good. I like the new generation styling. I know a lot of people hate the front grille on the 4 Series, and I personally really like it. Now, this one's a little bit different because as you can see, it's actually blocked out for most of the top end. And that's because, well, this is an electric powertrain. It doesn't really need any cooling or anything like that and so it's actually just black plastic over here and well it's environmentally friendly because there's this little cricket on here as well so that's just proof that it's friendly for the environment but nonetheless really good front looking grill um, again that's subjective because a lot of people hate it and especially on the fact that this is an electric car and it doesn't really need it but I think it looks good it has a really mean aggressive front end I like how the headlights kind of go in I believe these are the laser headlights but again forgive me if I don't have all the details because uh, I just took delivery of this vehicle and I'm just giving you my first impressions. Uh, you've got parking sensors. This is black plastic over here. Obviously, you don't need it to vent through, but it does look like this actually goes through into the wheel well. So it might be hard to see on camera, but this is a vent that actually goes through. Best for aerodynamics. And I believe you have shutters down here at the bottom of the grill that open up and close for best aerodynamics as well. Now, coming up top, you've got your standard BMW 4 Series hood. It looks really good. Coming to the side, this has the typical BMW trim piece over here that goes off like a hockey stick. Uh, the wheels are the upgraded, I believe these are 20 inch wheels. So this is gonna impact your range. This is gonna actually push it down to, I believe around 230 or so miles uh, versus the base version of this i4 it can get upwards of 300 miles depending on uh, the tires and everything that you pick. So keep that in mind, even though they look really good, they do sacrifice your range. Uh, I do like the fact that these are flat against the body. Uh, I'm talking the door handles because a lot of manufacturers, Tesla included, uh, I guess Tesla was kind of the first. They have these pop-out handles and they look cool and they kind of operate cool, but when you're in a rush and you're trying to get into the vehicle, I think something like this is super aerodynamic and simple. I don't like the electronic handles that cars are going to these days. So this is somewhat of a simpler design and I like it, which is kind of odd because Germans tend to overcomplicate things, but you do have your M series type of uh, side view mirror, which looks really nice. And then coming over to the back, again, you have that coupe styling. So this is a hatchback or coupe like um, opening in the back. So keep that in mind for storage purposes. And again, looking at the back, you really can't tell that this is an electric vehicle aside from no exhaust ports. You do have this kind of design for an exhaust, but there's obviously none needed. And then also the BMW badge has blue around it, which is kind of indication of the fact that it is electric. Now, before it rains too much on us, because as you can see, it's really, really dark over there and it's starting to drizzle. I do want to talk about the M50 badge over here. There's two variations that you can get of this vehicle. There's the regular i4 eDrive 40, and then there's this M50. And technically this is the first electric vehicle from BMW to carry 
the M badging. So um, take that for what it's worth. It does have um, over 530 horsepower on this vehicle. It's supposed to be wickedly quick, like 3.70 to 60, but that might be even underrated. But before we get rained out, let me jump inside and show you the interior because that's what's a little bit different compared to a traditional four series. Okay, now getting in, one thing that I immediately noticed was this is 100% BMW through and through. I mean, just the way this door closes doesn't feel any different from any other BMW I've sat in. It's very, very solid. I mean, take a listen at this again. I mean, it sounds like a tank. It's a really, really strong thud. You do have frameless windows, of course. Uh, all of this is soft touch material, really nice, um, as you would expect for a vehicle. I'm gonna show you the price point here in just a minute, but really like this leather color as well. Um, and I like the ambient lighting located down here. It looks really nice in the dark. Uh, memory seats, you've got your speaker over here. And then uh, this feels like a coupe. I mean, I'm kind of in a tight cocoon type of shape. And uh, this little compartment over here with the cup holder feels like it's super close to me just like any other coupe I've sat in. So keep that in mind. This is a grand coupe and it does feel like it. Even the distance to the passenger side, it's really not that wide of a vehicle. It's kind of cramped you could say but sporty is another way to say it it just it's tight it's it feels like you're in control of a very sporty vehicle uh coming over here you have your vents you've got your controls here for your lighting these seats do have thigh bolstering so you know you can pull this in and out if you want to adjust it just like typical bmw products um and then for some reason my camera is not focusing there we go uh you got your bmw steering wheel with heated steering wheel that is an option you've got all of your safety features which i'll discuss in a full length video and then your volume controls and then this is the creme de la creme this is where it's a little bit different than the outgoing or the existing four series this is what bmw calls the curved screen and it is a little bit curved let me show you what that looks like um it's slightly curved towards the driver just in typical BMW fashion. You've got a 12.3 inch digital display over here and then this is a 14.9 inch screen for the infotainment screen. Uh, and we'll show you some of the functionality here because I honestly haven't really even played around with it. The only thing you may hate here is the fact that your climate control is built into the touchscreen. You no longer have any of the climate control down here or up above the vents. Uh, the only thing you really have down here is just your, I believe, um, seek and track buttons and then your hazards and then the ventilation system for uh, the windshield and the rear windshield and your volume control obviously as well. That's nice that they kept that a physical button. Down here you do have a wireless charger. Keep in mind my phone over here is a Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and it just barely fits in here but it's pretty much the largest phone right now on the market so this will pretty much fit any iPhone or um, any other Android phone as well. You do have a USB port, two cup holders which is nice. The other nice thing is you can just close this off and I do like this wood material it carries over over here as well onto the passenger side coming further down this is your shifter kind of typical bmw fashion but you do have blue accents and you have a blue start stop button these are your cameras and parking sensors which i'll show off in a full review as long along with your sport modes over here and then you do have your parking brake as well this is how you control this um 8.0 i drive system from bmw so you can either use this um you know rotating knob over here with the quick select buttons or this is a touch screen as well so you know, it's pretty easy to use when you're using it as a touchscreen. Um, I haven't really played around with it, so that's why I'm kind of awkward with, with how I'm using it. But uh, I'll talk about this in a full review as well once I get accustomed to it. But really nice graphics overall. I mean, one of the biggest screens in a BMW. And then uh, this is just your armrest, obviously. Pretty soft touch. And uh, not as deep of a um, armrest console, um, is, that's what you call it, uh, because I think the battery goes in underneath this section. But still at least nice to have, and you do have a USB port in there as well. Um, closing this off, nothing much more to report on the passenger side aside from the coloration of the brown, which looks really nice. Coming to the roof, you do have a larger sunroof. Now, it's not a, I would say, panoramic moonroof, but it is larger than a lot of vehicles of this size. I mean, it's probably, you know, six inches longer than what you would expect from uh, just any other sports sedan. Now, while we're here, let me show you what the window sticker looks like. So a starting price for the BMW i4 is, if my camera focuses, $65,900 for this M50 series. And then you can get it all the way up with all the additional options to this one at $77,000, although you can get it even more expensive than that. But for $77,000, 
7000, you do get a lot of cool features um, and a wicked quick acceleration. Let's go into the back. Let me show you what that looks like because I think we're done with the front seats. Oh, that was a sound that uh, you could hear, I'm sure, as I opened the door. Um, actually, you'll hear it when I turn the vehicle on. So that's actually a really cool sound that was designed by Hans Zimmer, which is a famous uh, movie composer. He did The Dark Knight Rises and Inception and a lot of other uh, movies as well. So BMW teamed up with him on this vehicle and I think other vehicles as well. The 7 Series that uh, was just coming out right now. That one also has a Hans Zimmer soundtrack. So if you want something as close to Dark Knight as possible, well, you've got the BMW for that. Now, coming to the back, um, first time actually sitting back here and... Uh, well, it's a really nice place as well. Obviously, same soft touch materials. You got your speakers over here. And then let me move my camera bag here and take a seat. Um, overall, legroom seems pretty decent. Uh, where I'm sitting right now is where I would sit if um, I was driving the vehicle. And uh, sitting back here, yeah, it's actually pretty decent uh, legroom. I used to own a Mercedes C300 from 2013, if you guys recall, that's what started the channel. And I had less legroom back here than this vehicle. I do think the wheelbase is a little bit longer for this one than the um, C300 I had. You do have your air vents back here. Um, I don't see any type of heated seats back here. You do have your own set of climate controls, uh, but no heated seats. And then further down here, you do have some USB ports. Um, other than that, not really that much to report back here. Let me show you what's um, down here in this arm console, you do have your cup holders, and then I don't believe this opens up. Maybe it does for a ski pass through, but we'll show you what the trunk looks like. Uh, in terms of headroom, uh, it's actually pretty okay. I'm five foot nine and my hair is not touching. I got about half an inch uh, until it touches the roof. So uh, not too bad. If you're a little bit taller than I am, uh, you're probably gonna start hitting uh, the ceiling. But for shorter trips, really not that bad. Another thing to note as we're climbing out of the back seats, it doesn't feel too cramped like you would in a traditional coupe. I think because of that sunroof, it lets a lot of natural light in uh, and the lighter color interior. I think if it was a darker color interior and this was tinted a little bit more, it might feel a little bit cramped in the back seats. But again, this is a coupe type of you know arrangement so you're not going to have perfect sports sedan type of functionality now again this is a uh, you know power lift gate which is really nice to have because it adds a lot of space into the trunk space this is actually the um, bag for the charger which i'm charging it at home right now using a 110 volt um, outlet so just your regular household outlet is going to charge for a long period of time but i will give you guys the update on my charging experience and my overall range anxiety uh, after driving this vehicle for a week in a future video and then underneath here, you do have your Harman Kardon subwoofer. And uh, well, that eats into a lot of space. But other than that, a pretty nice trunk over here. You do have, looks like a 12 volt adapter. You have some hooks to uh, hook up some groceries as well. And then just a light over here on the left-hand side, along with a net for uh, you to put some stuff in. Uh, not a bad trunk overall. Looks like you also have a emergency release over here. But uh, this is nice to have because even though this vehicle is electric, you actually don't have a frunk in this vehicle. So let me show you what the uh, under the hood looks like, I guess I could say. So this opens just like a typical BMW. Let me show you what it looks like under the hood. You still have this little uh, cricket over here. He really likes this BMW. Um, let me open this up. So there you have an engine cover, even though there, there's no engine here. Uh, I'm sure they have a lot of uh, either battery or electric motor or wiring components underneath here because again, this is a retrofitted internal combustion engine to fit a you know electric motor and battery. So it's a little bit different than some of the other vehicles on the market like a Tesla Model 3, but this feels more like a traditional BMW. Like I said, when you hop inside this feels bmw through and through and the sacrifice of not having this is well you do have a pretty big trunk space and i think it's enough to carry around you know a few different things especially some small luggage if you're taking this on a road trip which i personally would not recommend because electric oh there goes the cricket uh, electric vehicles are not the best at uh, road trips. And we'll talk about charging here and what kind of networks this thing works on in my experience. But for now, I wanted just to give you a quick 360 inside and out and show you the cool car that I'm gonna have on the channel for the next week. Now, I am curious to hear what you wanna know about this vehicle. So at the time of this upload, 
Hopefully I still have the vehicle, so definitely leave your questions and comments down below and I'll try to address it in future videos on this car so you guys can stay informed on what essentially is gonna be the future of the automotive industry, whether you like it or not. Well, thank you all for joining me on this first look of the 2023 BMW i4 M50. I'm gonna be making a lot more videos on this car with way more in-depth detail than today's video, but I just wanted to kind of get this out there so you guys could see what this vehicle is and ask me any questions you have so I can address them. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video and if this is your first time stopping by, hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of the weekly car videos. There's lots of exciting content coming your way so you don't want to miss it. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of that. Also find me on all of the social media down in the description below at Shwayze underscore. Until next time everybody, I hope you stay Shwayze, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day.